So what does this have to do with Reformation? Uh, Today is Reformation Sunday. Every last Sunday or of October, or at least the closest Sunday to October 31st, um, we celebrate the Reformation. We pick that day because that's the day Martin Luther nailed 95 theses to the castle church door in Wittenberg. We kick-started the Reformation, which Martin and many of his colleagues continued to move forward, fighting for the doctrine of grace alone through faith alone. That a person could be saved, not because of their work or their merit or their effort or their goodness, but only because of the grace of God fully given to them in Jesus. That nothing was left to do because Jesus had done it all. That you were not dependent on your own effort, but on Jesus' effort, his perfection, not your own They fought for that, and we praise God for them because it is the only hope that we have today. But it didn't start that way. One of the things that really irritated Luther and his colleagues was that they realized that the the Catholic Church, and particularly the Pope, had become the doorkeeper of forgiveness. You had to go to your local priest or you had to buy an indulgence, you had to submit to the Pope in order to be saved, in order to get forgiveness, as if it were some commodity that you could buy. And that actually was first what irritated Luther. Luther didn't mind that there was a Pope. He didn't mind that there was a church with priests. He didn't mind going to confession. His problem was that those were the only places you could go. In fact, it's arguable that the verse that in many ways kick-started Lutheran theology, if you will, is this place where Jesus says, Anyone sins you forgive, they are forgiven. He's not talking to priests. He's talking to the whole church. That you can forgive one another's sins and they can be forgiven. Now, of course, that doesn't mean we do away with the office of the ministry. But it is to understand that you don't have to go through a doorkeeper to get to God. That would be a false messiah or a false savior. In other words, what irritated Luther the most, what kick-started the Reformation was that he took Jesus' word seriously to watch out for those who would say, I am the way to salvation. You have to go through me. And so he pushed back against that. And our church is a result of that. So here's the question. Why did those people at Luther's time just keep going along with the church being the doorkeepers of forgiveness? Why did it have to be Luther? Luther. Well, I think it's because most people didn't know the scriptures. And to some extent, that wasn't their fault. The the Catholic Church had suppressed the common knowledge of the scriptures. They didn't translate it into the language of the people. In fact, that was one of Luther's greatest contributions. He put the scriptures into German so that the German people could read it. I think if everyone would have known what the scriptures said, if they would have been studying them themselves, they would have said, something's not right here. This isn't what Jesus says. How many of us even though the scriptures are translated into our language and carried around in our pocket, electronically available at every moment, are reading the scriptures? Are we just as bad, even though we have access to the scriptures, as those common Germans in the 16th century? I just heard a woman who was talking about... um, a decreasing amount of knowledge of the scriptures and Christianity in North America. And what she said, it just struck me. She said, if you have a church where people are not reading the sermon text before church, listening to their pastor with an open Bible, and going back later to make sure that what he said was in line with the scriptures, you have fertile ground for false teaching. Look, I love you guys, and I want you to know the truth of God's word, and I will try my hardest to do that for you. But if you're not opening your Bible before, the, before Sunday, you're not reading along with me and making sure that what I'm saying is in line with the scriptures, how would you know if I lied to you? What does the Reformation have any t- anything to do with this? It's that we would know the scriptures. That's our heritage, right? Grace alone through faith alone, that's not necessarily our heritage. That's the result of our heritage, which is to know the scriptures because the scriptures clearly teach that. And so as the end times come, Let's take Jesus' word seriously, that we would stand firm to the end on what he has given us. His word and his word alone. Because there we can find the hope. That though we don't exactly know everything that's going to happen before the end, we know that that end is coming. It could come at any time and it is our salvation. God be praised for that.